Hello, welcome back to another episode where we continue to explore the Moog Model 15 iPad app. In this episode, let's take, take a look at the filters modules. So there's a bunch of filters on this, on this device. There's a filter section right here, low pass filter and high pass filter. And then some noise that we'll take a look at. This is all inside the 923. If we scroll up, we have two more filters. We have a fixed filter bank right here, the 907A and a voltage control low pass filter, the 904A. So let's play around with those and then we'll check out the manual to see what we missed. All right, so just like just like in tutorial one, we have a, um, let's ring it up to a sine wave, going to our voltage controlled amplifier and then running to an envelope generator and the output going to our trunk. Same as usual. Let's open up a key, put it on hold, and play a C note. Let's minimize this, make that go away. Let's play a little higher C note. Oops, wrong button. slide this thing off. Come on. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Let's first take a look at the noise. Let's just play white noise and see what that sounds like. Okay, so that's white noise. Let's listen to this pink noise. Pink noise is a lot rougher. A lot more like water. Okay, let's put back our... Let's go with a uh, rectangular wave. It might sound... might make it a little bit better. Okay. Let's run that into. Let's run that into a low pass filter, for example. And then let's run the low pass filter into the high pass filter and the high pass filter back to where we started. So as you can tell, the low pass filter is cutting out the high pitch noises. And the high pass filter is cutting out the, uh, the bass, but letting the, letting the high pitch go through. So if we cut both out. Turn up the volume a bit. So as I as I move the high pass filter down, you can hear more bass. I move, as I move it up, the bass goes away. So kind of kind of basic stuff. Let's run it into, instead, let's run it into this, to this guy. Let's go back to this rectangular wave and run it into the voltage controlled um, filter, low pass filter. And then run that guy to the output. So now we have this frequency range knob right in the center there. So 
So what's what's cool about this uh, module is it has control inputs. So let's shove some white noise into it and see how that sounds. It's a good way to play with the white noise, I think. You can really hear like the wind sound. What's kind of neat is you can actually connect two pink noises to these control inputs and they'll just get summed together so you can really hear the noise. You can even go so crazy as to add white noise to it too. There's tons of noise. So let's take this output signal and run it into this fixed filter bank and then run that back into our voltage control amplifier. So now we have in this fixed filter bank a bunch of bunch of fixed filters, kind of like a modern equalizer. And as you if you turn them all to zero, nothing goes through. They're all defaulted to zero. You can hear like kind of each frequency on its own if you turn it up to 10. You know, so you can let specific frequencies through. So useful if you want to control exactly what frequency goes through. While we're here, we might as well play with the mixer since that's another simple module. Let's run it down to this mixer here and let's run the output back up here. Let some of the, some of the low pass go through anyway. So now with this mixer, you have individual controls for each of the inputs. So let's run an oscillator, like a sine wave into the second, the second guy. So now I can control. So if we get big on that, so right there on, um, I can turn him off or I can turn him on. Pretty standard mixer stuff. I'm sure it's pretty revolutionary in the day. <laughs> and you have a master gain. I don't know what these multiples are. I have to read about that. And I believe this minus is actually 180 inversed. There's a plus and minus on the output. And I think it, I think it's, if I read correctly, um, they're a phase offset, which I'm sure is useful for some crazy advanced effects. All right, let's, uh, Turn off the hold here and let's read the manual. Wait, did it go away? Let's just turn off the power. Yeah, so we talked before about the uh, control panel and all the controller output stuff. I think I missed before the velocity. So the way the velocity works is uh, 
for the keys. Uh, let me show you that part. So on the keyboard, you can actually control the velocity by the location of where you initially can touch the key, the front edge to the back. And that controls the velocity output of that controller. If you're just using a virtual keyboard, of course, if you use a MIDI keyboard, it's much easier. Let's go back to the uh, modules section. All right, so I think we read that. We did oscillators before, got that section done. So now we're on this filter section. So the 904A, the voltage controlled guy that we saw, says this legendary 24 decibel per octave four pole ladder filter developed by Robert Moog helped, that helped give the original Model 15 its classic sound. So that knob, that one, two, three knob, that apparently changes the frequency range from one hertz to five hertz in number one. In number two, it goes from four to 20. In number three, it goes from 16 to 80 kilohertz. Regeneration. This control reintroduce a portion of the filter sound back into the filter to create an emphasis peak at the filter's cutoff frequency. Set high enough, the regeneration could cause a filter to self-oscillate, producing a usable sine wave sound source. That's pretty crazy. It's like feedback. So you have the 923 filters, which is the high pass and low pass filter that we saw in the beginning. And then it talks about right in the right there, it says located below the 923 is noise source. The noise is useful for a as an audio and modulation source. White noise is bright and ideal for creating wind and pitch percussion effect effects, while pink noise is darker and ideal for creating waterfalls, thunder, and deep percussive effects. However, using the two filters together, either in series or parallel, can produce outstanding results. And then you have the nine. 07 fixed filter bank that we saw at the end, which has the ability to sculpt the sound um, each of the tied across an individually wound induction coil, providing a band, each with a band with a unique tone. So that pretty much covers it. Oh yeah, we wanted to look at the uh, the mixer. Where's that one? Let's see what those multiple dudes were. Let's see, recorder module. We'll get to the other modules later. Mini bridge, audio bridge. Attenuators. Maybe it's in a different portion of the manual. I don't think it's in this one. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know. Not too many sections of the manual where it should be. No, there's the mixer part. Yeah, the four channel mixer can be placed anywhere in the signal chain. Mixing control signals allows you to set different. Da, da, da. There are two sets of outputs primary, and normal, second, minus is phase inverted. Doesn't say what those, what these multiples are. I wonder if it's just extra output. Let's just listen to it and see what it is. I'll turn the power back on. Is it some kind of like...
Yeah, I'm not sure. Manual doesn't seem to say, and there's one right here too under the reversible attenuator. I bet it doesn't say what that one does either. I think there's an attenuator section on this one. Let's see. Two, two, two attenuators. Yeah, it doesn't say. Okay, I found the section where it is, right above oscillators. Multiples. Two clusters of multiple jacks are provided. Each one consists of a four jacks wired together. These multiples allow you to insert any signal into one jack and have it output at all other three. In addition, each multiple can allow signals to be summed together into one, although there's no individual gain control for each input. To use a multiple in a double control signal by splitting it and then sending it sending it twice in the, in the same direction. Use a multiple to double a control signal by splitting it. Huh. Weird. So I guess you can like double something. So let's see, like I want to take the output. Let's go back and listen to the output again. Okay, so instead of, I actually want, let's see, I'm going to take this, well, I'll just leave the output there. Alright, so I'm going to take this guy and put it there, and then I'm going to take, there he goes, so then I can, so each one of these is the same. So I can, it's basically, I can split it, and I can split it over here too. So I can bring it over here. And it's the same. So it's just like it's just a way to split into three. I can also do some goofy thing where I can route here to here, maybe. Nope, can't do that. I wonder how you double. I can't imagine like programming this thing without this interface. It's pretty hard to debug and like remember what you're doing. Why well, doesn't that work? But I'm not taking. I need to run it to a sine wave and run the output there. But then I want this one going over here. And this one going here. Doesn't sound too much different. So you got to sum them all together. I wonder if I can run it to noise maybe. Let's see, get rid of these. Let's see, here's a pink noise. Just gonna turn that down a bit. Let's run more pink noise to it. Yeah, so, the, so you see when I ran that second pink noise, it got louder. Then I can run some white noise to it. And I added the white noise. So now all three of these guys 
all three of these are summing into this purple guy. And it has no effect on, you know, this guy's no effect. So these multiples just way to sum things. Or split. Kind of weird. Just an extra weird module. I think that's a pretty good stopping point. Making good progress. We need to look at the attenuators, take a look a little bit more at the voltage controlled amplifier. It's not really too much of that. We need to take a look at the voltage controlled oscillator, the envelope generators, the reversible attenuator, these bridges, delay effect, and reversible attenuator and amplifiers. And there's our quarter thing. And then we're done. All right, see you next time.